His shoulders are blown out and can't be repaired. Things like that that, to me, have nothing to do with the art. I couldn't understand how defiant he started to get, and uh, it had just gotten to a point where nothing worked. Praise didn't work, threatening didn't work, punishment, restrictions. Eventually, I told him, I'm going to do this anyway. I'm either going to let me go, or I'm going to sneak out of the house, I'm going to steal the car, and I'm going to drive into L.A., I'm going to go hang off a bridge. And I'm going to steal some paint on the way there. And I remember throwing a handful of cash down the stairwell at him. And I said, pick it up and don't come back. Call me. I always want to know what you're doing, but you can't live here anymore. That, I think, was probably one of the lowest points, because the last thing you ever want to do is throw your child out of your house. Somebody caught a tag inside my E and like went all over my whole shit. Like, oh, there's this guy right here, expert. He's got a tag in his doorway. Yeah, I wanted to be clear that, you know, I fucking went over you. You know, like. That's what's up. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. This never happens. I'm way smoother than this. Ow. My father wasn't very good at paying bills. He never had a, a job, per se, but, but he would um, somehow bring money in, which a lot of it went to drugs. Like, on one of his birthdays, you know, one of the rare happy times of the year and shit, I asked him how old he was, and he just, like, slaps me mad hard. What the fuck just happened, you know what I mean? I was like, he's like, he said something about it being disrespectful. I'd be asking, like, yeah, old days, how old they are. There was very little affection in our house growing up. You know, we were raised by a television. Uh, that's pretty much where we got our sense of family from. Yo, Curls, what's up? We got those fours in, those gray fours, gray and black, they're hot. So it was hard, but uh, we just found ways to occupy our time. I was in the bathroom of some hotel room in Jersey with like dishes in the sink. Bitter bit just finished eating. And my parents were yelling like put downs and shit at me. Like I wish I knew exactly what it was that they were yelling me about. It was so stupid and frivolous. They were just taking out their frustrations on me and I just wasn't man enough for it. I couldn't take it anymore. It was just like they've been doing it my whole life. And I was sitting there and I'm like, dude, tomorrow I'm not coming back from school. I'm just like out. <sighs> a lot of care and tenderness that goes into handling sneakers. And I was just like, I'm gone. And I didn't come back. I just turned 17, I think. So I didn't finish my senior year of high school. I didn't finish at all. I like skateboarded with my friends all day, and then like at the end of the night, it's like I just fucking go on the train. It was all good, and just rack everything I needed because it was just sweet like that for me to roll. So. He had like a Mountain Smith backpack on the front and a Mountain Smith backpack on the back, and a skateboard and like two bags in his hands, and just like a gang of paint and a gang of markers and God knows what else. Oh, like all my shit, you know? I like, have my shit, my big ass bag. Fucking, I was just like my ill pillow, and I'll just like sit, and I'm on point too, you know, I'm not like fucking Daryl sleep. Everyone partying, like a lot of drugs, a lot of drinking, we were just young kids, just trying to have a good time, basically. It was so exciting, because it was like, everything was like so new, I'd never done anything before, 
you know, spend a week in jail. I'll be like, wow, the whole time, like, what's gonna happen next? Like, it's, it's you know, I had bad fun. Toughened me up. All that stuff that he held inside just exploded out. And it was, it was, it was really a shock. I met my first, or just my only, like, boyfriend, Paul. And, like, you know, I moved in with him in the Bronx. Total, like, domesticated, you know. I, I, I didn't know how to function, like, in a regular lifestyle. Like, you know, that was good. Homophobia in the real world is hard enough. Imagine what it's like in the graffiti world. You know, the fact that, you know, as a black man, he's standing strong as a writer and proud of who he is and his sexuality, I think is fucking amazing. People are like, oh, he's not even hiding it? Oh. I'm here to break stereotypes. That's why I like the people know that I'm gay and shit and like fucking, you know, and man, I'll fuck you up as a gay person, you know what I mean? And I'll, and I'll write graffiti on your face and shit. And I'll beat you in a fucking game of Jeopardy. And I'll fucking out like, you know, run you in some 100 meter dash. And fucking, uh, here comes the helicopter, so we're gonna chill. Oh, it's police. Is it? Yeah. It's not the police, it's security or something. All right, well, I saw a little light. Miss 17 and I paint illegal graffiti in very high traffic areas where it gets a lot of attention. I like to call them jock spots. There are spots that, you know, men would be concerned about being at, you know, all hours of the night. And I know she's up there with like 17 and. I mean, I've been in the boondocks and in, in the middle of the Bronx and, you know, in crazy kind of locations, and I've been like, damn. Chill, chill. When we go out bombing, we are one unit. I mean, we just take turns. One of us is gonna look out, eagle eye, every direction, make sure nobody's coming. That's how you have to do it. If you don't have each other's backs, no one's gonna get your back for you. PMS for life. It's the only crew I will ever rep. Going to these really fucked up neighborhoods and essentially I'm this little white girl running around wherever I please, writing my name, and so when I teamed up with Claw, suddenly it became more obvious that I would be a victim because we had guys following us and we had guys trying to hit on us and didn't want to take no for an answer. This guy's backing up because he thinks we're hookers. They always <laughs> think I'm a hooker. And a cheap one, I might add. Anybody messes with me, I'm gonna spray him right in the face. Stop, hold it, freeze, now. I like your ball ball. When we come out, if we just catch tags on the little bridge that's alongside of here, that should be hot because it's oh, very. Man. A lot of out of towners are coming and bombing right up here in the little industrial zone and then leaving. <laughs> I'm all city. I hit the Bronx. All right, let's go. go. What else should we do? Um, we could do that shit on the Bruckner, but right close to here. Yeah, it'd be great. Do we have to climb a fence to get in there? No. 